Many people ask the question, what is God like? The question is answered in this story, in the 15th chapter of Luke's Gospel. And he said, now Jesus is using a parable. Now a parable means a story. A, Jesus was a great storyteller. Almost everywhere he went, he told stories. And those stories had spiritual and moral applications. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided, he divided them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed the swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare, and I perish here with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and say to him, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no worthy, no longer worthy to be called your son. Let me be one of your servants. And he arose and came to his father, and when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let's eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he was found, and they all began to be merry. Jesus said in this chapter that when one person turns to God, turns away from sin and repents, the angels in heaven rejoice. Many people ask, what is God like? I want you to see a picture in this passage of the Father and how much the Father loved the Son, even though the Son broke all the rules and left home. The Father never ceased loving Him, just as our Heavenly Father never ceases loving us when we depart from what He teaches. Here's a picture also of a young man, maybe a, an older teenager, and he was restless. Here was a son who wanted to get lost. He wanted all he could get. He wanted to get as far away from his father and the discipline of home and the church and God and religion as he could possibly get. He wanted to live as he pleased. And so he went to his father and he said, Father, when you die, I will get one-third of your estate. My older brother will get two-thirds, but I want mine now. I don't want to wait. I want you to give me my third now. I want to go out and live my own life and be my own man. It's the picture of the modern generation. A top country song a few years ago said, don't tell me what to do. And that's what many young people say today, as well as older people. They're saying to their parents and teachers and to the police, let me alone. They say, have sex now. Don't wait for marriage. Assert your independence. Do your own thing, regardless of the consequences. 74% of our teens have had sexual experience by the time they graduate from high school. Think of it. 
74 percent. 400 teens give birth each month in the Twin Cities, and about the same number of teens have an abortion each month here in the Twin Cities. This young man in Jesus' story sets off for the distant country. He wants to get out of sight of anyone who might know and criticize him. He wants to be free to do as he pleases. And in the United States, there are over a million and a half runaways. I realize that many have left because of abuse in the home. Teenagers are not the only runaways in our society. Hundreds of thousands of men and women are running, running away from each other and their marriage vows through divorce. People are running all over the country away from problems and away from relationships that they vowed to keep. This prodigal son is a picture of all of us. We have aimed at our own personal happiness and missed the mark of God's plan for our lives. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of God's glory. Jesus said, you serve me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. You go to church, some of you. You've been baptized. You've been confirmed. But your heart is not with Jesus. Your heart is on something else, on pleasure, on money, on a job you'd like to have that somebody else has. Jesus said, you serve me with your lips. Oh yes, you can talk about religion, and many of you can talk intelligently about it and you put up a good front, but deep down inside, Christ is not first in your life. So this young man began to run, and he ran from himself. He ran from God. He ran from his family. And around us here today, there are many people who are doing the same. The movie star, Sylvester Stallone, whose name all of you know, has made many millions of dollars from his films. When asked the question what effect large amounts of money have on a person's life, he said this. Listen to this. Money does not bring peace of mind. Actually, money brings about many problems. Everything is magnified a hundred thousand times when you have money and he had plenty of it and he knew that to be a fact in his own life and he went on that's not to complain but once you make a fortune you think that it becomes all green lights and blue skies that's not true as a matter of fact money brings out some of the most vile characteristics of other persons of other people's personalities that you can imagine. Now this is, I'm still quoting Sylvester. What about you? When John F. Kennedy was going to, President Kennedy was going to speak in Dallas the day he was killed, he had his speech all prepared. And in that speech, he was quoting a verse of scripture. Mark 8, 36. For what shall it profit a man? if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul. Suppose you had the whole world, all of its wealth, all of its money, all of its pleasure, and the most beautiful girls in the world, the most handsome men, somebody you've dreamed about and fantasized about, you had it all. What would it profit you? If in the end your soul is lost because you see your body is very temporary, a few years and it's all over. But your soul, your spirit lives forever. 
either in heaven or hell. Which is it going to be for you? A commitment or a decision made by you tonight, one way or the other, will decide where you are a hundred years from tonight. This young man lost all of his money. You see, as long as he had that money, he could go into a bar and say, Set them up, boys. It's all on me. But that came to an end. And the scripture says he began to be in need. It is probably the first time in his life that he had ever been hungry or lacked anything materially. His physical hunger is a picture of our spiritual hunger. You and I are searching for something. We're not quite sure what it is. We're searching for something to fill a void in our lives. What about you? Are you? Jesus can fill that void tonight if you'll let him. When he came to himself, he came to his senses. He realized that there was an alternative. There's an alternative for you tonight. Have you learned to face the truth? You can come home to God by faith in Christ. You see, the Father was back home praying for his son, thinking about his son day after day, week after week, month after month, and perhaps year after year. And the young man was broke. His friends had left him. He tried to borrow money. He couldn't borrow it. He was left with nothing. And he became very humble and very sorry. He got one fellow to hire him to feed the pigs. And you find him out feeding the hogs and the pigs, and he gets down and eats with them. He's so hungry. He grunts like them. And if you went out there, you'd see him just as dirty as a pig. But he also was very humble about it. His pride was gone. And he said, I am sorry. I will arise and go to my father. So he did that. He said, I'm going to tell my father that I've sinned and that I'm sorry. But he didn't realize that his father had been looking down the highway all these months or all these years. Every day about sunset, the father would go and sit on the porch and rock on the rocking chair and think about his son that was lost, never thinking he'd see him again. And he would watch for him, filled with love. And he would pray, oh God, send my son back home. And one day he was sitting there, and he looked out, and he saw a person coming down the road. He couldn't quite make it all out, but he said to himself, you know, that looks like my son. And then he ran. As fast as he could at his age, he ran and embraced his son and hugged him and squeezed him. And the son blurted out, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called your son. Please make me a servant. All the arrogance was gone. He didn't try to justify what he had done. He realized he had sinned. He cast himself on the mercy of his father. King David had a confession of his own sin in the 51st Psalm that I often read. 
the sacrifices of God are a broken heart, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. To repent means to turn around. You see, Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. And he said, if you will repent of your sin, and that was the first sermon he ever preached was on repentance. And repent means to change. Change your thinking, change your mind, change the direction of your life. And turn toward God and ask God to come into your heart and help you to live a new life. And this young man arose and came to his father. And that's why we give an invitation at all of our crusades to give people an opportunity to take a step of repentance toward God. 